everyone. My name is Dmitry. I work at Android Cuttlefish and Android Bootloader teams. So, and today I'm going to present you some initiative, which is Android Generic Bootloader, which I'm a part of. So, to better understand the problem, I think it makes sense to share some context how the Android boot, how it looks like basically on a high level. So, basically, as you, I guess, probably cannot see on a slide, but I will share some, some quick overview on that. So, like, first of all, we're reading some block devices, so verifying this data with a leap AVB, so then, like, parsing some Android-specific headers, like, a, from a Android-specific partitions, like a boot, init boot, vendor boot, everything, so, and then, uh, like, put it together, and, uh, for example, the kernel, uh, RAM disk, uh, boot config, kernel command line, so sometimes we also need to decompress the kernel, so a lot of stuff there. So then we're building it, everything together, and put into some, usually SOC specific place into the RAM. So prepare the board in some art specific way, for example, for ARM64, it can be like disabling MMU, flashing some caches, and finally do a kernel jump. So as you may guess, majority of this stuff it's kind of can be reused, and it's common for, for the whole ecosystem. Some of the other stuff can be kind of edgy, so like majority of it is like common, but we still need to do some SOC-specific stuff. And some of the other stuff can be purely SOC-specific, for example, communication with a secure world, so et cetera. So, and actually, by taking all of that, the main problem we currently have is like a fragmentation on a, on a bootloader level. So, and it's like the main problems about it is like uh, Android boot flow is getting changes some regularly. So we introduce the new partitions, we introduce the new versions of some uh, partition headers. So, and like we need to make sure that everything needs to be re-implemented and adopted by the various amount of firmwares across the ecosystem. So some of the migration happening, for example, from command line to the boot config, which is, can be like, uh, it usually take a lot of time due to this fragmentation. So another problem we have, so which is not really related to the fragmentation, is uh, the release cycle of the Android boot logic is mainly, um, is right now is kind of tied to the release cycle of the bootloader. So if, if you want to update some Android boot flow, you need to update the whole bootloader, which is probably not something you, you usually want to do. So. Also, another issue is like documentation. It's maybe not enough. So like we're releasing some specs for every Android release about like how to boot it. So, but it definitely may have some gray areas. So the vendors may have their own interpretation on that. So like, and if we have some piece of code as a documentation, it can be uh, positive to the community. So alongside with this like specs, we will have uh, some production ready code that you can look at and understand how the thing's supposed to be implemented there at least from the Google perspective. Uh, so that's why we introduced an Android generic bootloader, which is like UEFI application provided by Google. So the main values of that is like, it's on a high level about solving all the problems I mentioned. So, but specifically for the partners, it can be useful. We really bet that supporting the GBL, adopting it for, as a first step and then supporting it for the, some future changes we are doing there is like should be easier than re-implementing the whole stuff and then support it. So, and also like solving the documentation problem. So if you have like a reference implementation, use it on a production ready devices. So like it's a, it's a good piece of knowledge. So we can all learn from. Uh, for Google is main value is like to basically move faster in this area. So if you have like uh, hundreds of different firmwares implementing the Android boot flow over and over again. So it's kind of it's hard to make any changes and expect that it will be adopted by the whole community. So, but if you have some like, the piece of code that can be reused and can be valuable. So, and also we can make sure we use some upstream, at least from ASP perspective companies such as like Leap, AVB, et cetera. Mm. GBL from the technical perspective is currently is a UEFI application written on Rust, so without standard library. So we support dynamic allocations backed by UEFI allocation services. We already supported uh, the, uh, some 
all architectures that used across the ecosystem, at least the popular ones. So it's available uh, as a part of the ASP and developed there. So like it's fully transparent. It's built by Bazel. Uh, we compile it against the upstream from the again from the ASP perspective to links. So and it's going to be shipped as a separate partition, which is like ESP AB partition on your device. And we already using the GBL to boot the cuttlefish. So not by default for now at least. So but we definitely have some future plans on that. So why do we decided to choose the UFI? So um, the main the main uh, the main reason for that is like it's already adopted by some of the big partners uh, and used on their production devices. So like they have some like it's a big uh, good proof of concept here. So like it's also advocated by ARM System Ready Initiative. So like it's already kind of used by the ecosystem here. Uh, it's also supported on some of the bootloaders uh, already and like. As I understand, the Google have done it for the U-boot, so like, and we definitely have some future plans on that. So the UFI interfaces mechanism, since I mentioned that like the whole bootloader Android thing is kind of fragmented, fra uh, fragmented. So we uh, like UFI interfaces providing us an easy way to like to make some custom stuff here and there to make sure at least on the early stages that GBL is kind of easy to adopt. So. We already have a lot of like drivers for existing hardware we are already relying on. I'm going to cover it on the next slide. So UFI runtime is is kind of stable. So 2.10 specification is like 10 years without any changes, I guess. Uh, we also consider it a couple of alternatives. So the main one is probably a core boot. So, but according to our understanding, so if we use a core boot, we we need to force all our partners to open source their firmware, which is like will be definitely uh, a hard thing to do, especially with big commercial companies. So, like, ask them like just do the open source for your firmware right now, just to support the GBL. So, like, it seems like not gonna work. Uh, we also using the U boot to. To boot the cuttlefish, so that we kind of support the Android boot flow there. So, and sometimes we're making some upstream work uh, from like ASP version of the U boot to the mainline one. So, but it's also kind of not solving the main problem of the fragmentation because we cannot force the whole ecosystem just to use a U boot or any other particular solution. So, uh, we already uh, supported a couple of. Uh, main uh, UFI interfaces right now um, to, do, to do the boot. But as I mentioned, we have a lot of vendor SIC specific stuff. So that's why we introduced some our own custom interfaces that like we definitely have to have to have at least on the early stages to make sure that like we can realistically look at the current fragmentation situation and like support it support all the possible boards and let SOC do their own specific stuff on some different stages of the Android boot I mentioned before. So like important note to mention is like uh, our UFI interfaces are not really finalized fully. So and like the API may change, et cetera, because like we are definitely working with the partners with some dev boards to understand the all possible cases better. And um, like and only then we will be able to came out with some final APIs here. So, but I will go through some of them to mention like uh, some rationale behind some of them. Uh, the first one is like to run the operation system, we need also to, we need to pass some configuration to that. In the Linux case, so it's a usually device tree, command line, boot config, stuff like that. So currently we're building it from the artifacts that provided, that built by uh, Android build system. So but some of that artifacts can be reused across multiple SOCs. So for example, uh, only bootloader and SOC may know which particular base device tree to choose and like which overlays to apply, which like some other changes so that can be SOC specific as well, we need to apply on top of that. So we're definitely providing some ways to customize that. Mm. Another one is like a slot thing. So because as I mentioned, TSP is go uh, GBL is going to be part of the ESP AB. It means that firmware needs to somehow choose like which slot to to use without the GBL. So like uh, we're definitely relying on this AB logic uh, 
that implemented by the SOCs for now. So that's why we have a custom interface that like GBL will rely on as well. So fast boot is interesting topic. So it's not about the how the Android boots, so but it's still the big part of the Android bootloader. So and it's the majority of the fast boot is again getting the re-implemented by the vendors over and over again, especially the device part of it. So that's why we bring the fast boot with the GBL as well. So we already supported two transports, so like a TCP via some low-level UFI protocol, and also USB via our own custom protocol, which I'm going to cover on the next slide. So the one note about the network, so like we decided to go with a low-level network protocol rather than relying on something more high-level, such as like TCP, UDP protocols, because some of the firmware may have a very limited network support. For example, according to our experience, you boot right now, so like it's uh, the like, TCP stack there is not really fully done, et cetera. So like, that's why we are bringing our own TCP stack with, embedded into the GBL, so to make sure we support as much platforms as possible. So uh, the USB protocol I mentioned, so like currently some default UFI USB protocol is kind of hardware aware, and we definitely don't have, uh, don't really want to know all that information inside the GBL to make a decision how to initialize your USB stack, et cetera. So that's why we have like slightly a high, more high level protocol. We just care about like how to start USB, how to stop it, and how to send data both sides. So that's why we have a high level protocol. So like, and at least for now, uh, the parties will, uh, the parties as a community will have to like uh, wrap uh, their own low level SOC specific protocols and use our own one to the API to give a chance GBL to rely on it. So the fast boot, as I mentioned, like it, uh, like majority of it, it's common. The whole protocol, the whole, the whole stuff around that. But vendors still doing some custom stuff there. So, for example, custom fast boot variables, custom fast boot commands. So, and we definitely want to support that. So that's why we have a the uh, GBL specific protocol, so where, where you can add your comments, variables, etc. Or like, for example, if you wipe your user data, so like here some SOC specific stuff may happen. For example, like to, uh, to wipe the whole uh, secure world, which is also uh, can be very, very SOC specific, at least right now. Mm. So, and what are our future plans here? So it's definitely right now at this stage is like working more with the partners, uh, also like uh, bringing it up to more hardware. We're already doing it on some of the dev boards, but to better understand all the possible cases and to be able to come up with a good APIs on that, we need to learn about the real hardware cases. So that's why reach us out if you want us to help you to support your board and run it with the GBL. So it will also help us to finalize all the UFI interfaces we have. So also, as I mentioned, like not all firmware currently supports the UFI. That's why we are working on that as well. So like we are bringing the UFI runtime to the little kernel, which is quietly used across the ecosystem. We already merged some of the base, basic UFI stuff there and working towards it. So, and probably as a result in the very end, so like it would be something bring more standardization here. So like we will get rid of our custom interfaces to make sure so adopting the GBL is kind of, uh, it's at least easier than re-implementing the whole stuff in the very end. So, so some useful links here is like source code is, it's there, so like also some documentation about how to use GBL and how to run it with the QMU, with the Carlfish. So all the development is happening, all the PRs from our side is happening on the ASP as well, and also some points of contact if you wanna reach out our own, our team or like me in particular. And some topics we are interesting to hear the opinion from community, so like it's basically everything I shared today on a high level, so also, Mm, another one is like, we definitely want to learn more about when you do and in which particular places you're doing some SOC specific stuff, particularly on a, like what you're doing with a device tree, what you're doing like with everything. Also like UFI is kind of single threaded thing by, by design. So 
uh, we are currently adopting some, I think product also do some stuff in parallel if the firmware supports that. So like, but we definitely wanna learn more if you do any parallelization with the UFI, so please share it with us. So overall, yeah, thank you. Looking forward to hear your questions. <coughs> so moving to EFI makes me sad generally. I'm, I'm bummed that ARM ecosystem is moving in that direction. Uh, so my question is, what about core boot? Uh, what if you have a device that's running core boot and you want to use the standard boot, like the, this, the standard boot method, which I think is great to defragment the ecosystem? Would it be possible to add code to GBL to make it into, you know, that you, so you could build it as like a core boot bootloader or an EFI bootloader? Is that something that you would be open to or do you really want to push everyone to UEFI? So, uh, we definitely, so we, we don't have the final solution, final, Kind of opinion on this right now, so like we definitely don't want to push everyone to use the UFI. So, but according to what we hear from the partners right now, so UFI is kind of more preferable. But if we have some like a big guys who want to use the core boot, we will definitely think about like how to how to have another layer to like to abstract from the UFI and support some other stuff. So like we are keeping it in mind. So, but currently we never heard about like anyone big one I use a car boot for that. So like, but if we do so, okay, it reaches out, so like we definitely want to hear more about it. Uh, yeah, so, so you say, you're talking a lot about partners here, um, and I'm wondering also about consumers. Like, I mean, in, um, uh, you know, the, the talk that Chris just gave, um, it was a lot about, you know, who's, who's consuming this stuff. Um, and I think, I, I just wonder, you know, given that um, Chris is talking about trying to, I think, reduce fragmentation here, uh, it's, I just wonder, uh, it, and I wanted to clarify your, um, it, it sounds like the reasons you don't want to use uh, U-boot and core boot are because of the license, um, which is the same license that Linux uses um, in those cases, and instead uh, opting for something that lets people uh, much more easily fragment uh, the, the ecosystem because they can just proprietorize whatever changes they make. Um, so I'm, I'm just just wanted to clarify that because um, because it just seemed a bit a bit confusing to me, um, and 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 just just make sure I understand uh, the reasons for not using those other um, other tools. Mm -hmm. So to get rid of the fragmentation is like we definitely need to have that all that big guys on board. So like to uh, to support the GBL. So like and if we force right now to use something like which requires them to open source their firmware, it's just not gonna work according to the initial feedback we get from them. So, but as we discussed uh, before, so like, uh, I don't know, probably in the future supporting something like core boot is like the whole thing is already launched. So like majority of the Android device are booted using the GBL. So like, and getting some other people core boot specific stuff to support that. So it's definitely something we would be open for. So, Okay. Like yeah, UFI I, I guess is just I'm, a thing to easy to start from, so that's why we're doing it. Yeah. Okay. I I guess I understand. I just it just seems odd. Like Google can tell them what to do. Uh, I feel like it's it, it's not like you have to cater to what they're doing. Like you own Android, you can tell them this is how we're doing it. Uh, so, but we definitely need to take their opinion, right? Because like it, it's it's not just about the Google like saying what to do. So we're definitely hearing some like uh, opinions from the from the other companies that's using Android, so and if we force them to do so, like it would be really hard. I see. In my experience, uh, what is I mean, Fastboot is very Google specific. So so far, the vendors had to do their own implementation. In that sense, this seems like a good idea to control, like put things that are Fastboot specific together, and uh, not have the vendors worry about how to implement, you know, boot header image. V7 or whatever. So I, I have two questions. One, is there any plan to help prevent vendors from forking GBL and it no longer becoming generic if vendors think they need customizations that's not allowed by the EFI protocols? And second, is there any plan to upstream the implementations of the EFI protocols to upstream U-Boot? It sounds like that, I'm assuming that's what you're using for Cuttlefish. Uh -huh. 
So we already have some done, at least on the AOSP side, so like by upstreaming the UFI protocols, so like, but they're not on the actual upstream right now, at least, so, and the first one, so like we're running out of time, please reach me out directly, okay? Thank you. <laughs>